Welcome back everyone to the Tower Project. I know it's uh, quite an unexpected time to be making a video, but let me get it back down to first time speed here. It's Saturday evening and I didn't have anything else to do, so I figured what the heck, I'll show you guys a replay. And I know I mentioned in the channel update video that I would be doing a video on the different angles of units and whatnot in Medieval 2. And I kind of want to combine that uh, with this battle because I think you're going to see a lot of a lot of very high level missile tactics and missile play going on in this along with just a very high level siege in general that I think you guys will really appreciate and get a lot of um, get a lot of good and useful material and help from. So we are on the Britannia expansion here in the northern castle and it is a beautiful sunset evening. And I am defending, playing as France. And I have two allies. It's a three verse four. I've got uh, RXN Rogue playing as England. And I've got Lavernicus playing as Sicily. Two very good players. If you know the community, I'm going to turn down the music just a little bit here. Eh, we'll go a little higher. There we go. All right. Perfect. So we went, before I get to the attackers here, we went with a, a very interesting strategy, uh, almost what some people might call a noob strategy, but one thing not to forget is that often old or outdated strategies can be repurposed and utilized effectively in battles. And this will be a good example of that as we face three very competent, four very competent attackers. Uh, if anything, uh, several of them better than us. Uh, and it's 4 verse 3. So what we went with is we went with a no cavalry army. Uh, so none of us brought any cavalry. And then we just staked up the inside of the castle. Uh, because some of the players we're playing against are very versatile and aggressive with their cavalry. And we figured maybe we'd get some value out of placing the stakes. We'd also mitigate charge damage. And we would, of course, by not bringing cavalry, uh, add two unit slots uh, of availability to our uh, 20 unit roster so instead of bringing two horses two cavalry like we generally would now you have two more spots for additional archers or additional infantry to protect your archers and another thing you'll notice is you're going to see a lot more archers in this battle than you normally would in a commentary video and the reason for that is in the expansions and in britannia almost ex especially Armor is far lower. And what that means is that units that were relatively ineffective in vanilla are actually quite effective here. And that's why you're going to see a lot of archers. So you see, I, I'm bringing Scotsguard, and of course Scotsguard are good in vanilla too, but they are even better here in Britannia. Uh, because morale is generally uh, more fragile all around. Scotsguard, of course, bringing very good morale and very good stamina which means they're going to stay fresh till the end of the battle. As you can see, we've got a very long battle ahead of us. I do have a couple units of Flemish pikemen. He actually just won, and then I think I have one Swiss pikeman over here somewhere. It's been a few weeks since I played this battle, uh, and I haven't watched it before doing this video, so I'm going to be a little fresh. I think I brought him. I'm going to eventually bring him over here as we're going to sally out. England, of course, a bunch of longbows. We both brought some arquebusier. And I'm going to go into a lot more depth of unit placement and everything here in the moment. Just trying to give you a little overview. And then Sicily, of course, a lot of Pavis Crossbowmen. And since it, is, since it is Lavernicus, you already know he's got two mortars. You don't even have to worry about that question. So let's take a moment and look at the attackers here. Now, <laughs> a lot of people change their names in this. Uh, but this 104 and Truer, this is Russian King. Uh, playing as Denmark. And Orden's Marskel here. This is uh, Teutonic Elite. Teutonic Elite in Russian. Uh, being probably the most powerful duo in the game period. So just facing them two uh, is very difficult of a task on its own. Over here we have Master Spartan. This is actually Tiger status. Again, he changed his name. And the only person on the attacking team that did not change their name is Kubla Khan over here playing as Turkey. And Kuba is going to take on this corner all on his own, whereas the other three are kind of going to team up over here on the long wall. Uh, generally speaking, in competitive play, the long wall is seen as the weaker spot of the northern castle that we're in, primarily this final linkage of wall here. 
Now, this is considered the weakest spot in the castle because, you, as you can see, there's no good archer positions uh, from which to fire down on, to, uh, on that spot, except for maybe right up top of the wall here could get a little bit. But that's about it. Whereas there's a lot of corners and rotations and angles of the wall that make uh, holding the rest of this section of wall very easy. Or at least very doable. Uh, but this final linkage is very difficult. So one of the answers to that is to stick your mortars right here and shell the crud out of whatever goes through. You also have some additional towers back here you can activate to help a little bit. But that's why good attackers will generally uh, focus on this last linkage of wall. And then if you can conquer up to this tower here, then you can really start to get archers up on the wall to fire down in the center. And that is almost assuredly, undoubtedly, what our two attackers uh, over here are going to do. Tiger, uh, looking like he was feigning to go over there, uh, but he is eventually going to be attacking this corner, which I think, in my opinion, is the strong area of the castle. Uh, of course, you have this just perfect angle, uh, right here on top of the wall to fire down into there. Uh, you also have this angle. You also have this angle to fire down in. Uh, you also have this angle that can hit over there. So there's a lot of very good spots uh, to place archers. And there's very few places that are safe from archers. Now you'll notice uh, that I already have some of my archers placed. I have some crossbowmen up here and I want to use this battle to demonstrate to you one of the um, one of the key points that it took me a long time to figure out but that is exceptionally helpful in high level play with Medieval 2 and that is to understand the difference in angles of missile units and I said in my channel in, in my channel update video uh, that sieges are won and lost by geometry and that is very true uh, and what I mean by geometry is the angles at which you can get your archers to fire and or protect your archers from other archers. And so knowing these maps like the back of your hand, knowing the right spots, and knowing your units and their capabilities is essential to being able to put yourself in the right spot to get the proper geometry to win the battle. Because when you're outnumbered, like you often are in 4v3 or 2v3 or whatever... Your infantry is not going to win the battle. You have to win with missiles. And generally speaking, with armor-piercing missiles, if you really want to get enough kills to turn the tide of the battle. And so the thing with crossbowmen is crossbowmen are not able to lob their shots effectively. What I mean by that is they're not able to fire up and down. So, like, if there was a unit that was, you know, over here on where my mouse is pointing on this hill... It would be very difficult for these crossbowmen to shoot them uh, because they're not going to get the right angle because they're not able to fire up and over this wall and down. They can only fire in straight lines, whereas if this was a Scots Guard or an archer unit, they would be perfectly capable of doing that. Uh, let me find you guys another example of this. Um, it would be very... Actually, this would be even a better... Uh, a better example. So let's say I had a unit of crossbowmen sitting up on this wall. And there was a unit down here that I wanted to shoot. That would basically be a waste of my ammo. My guys would be firing up and over this wall. Because these, in their mind, would be blocking their shots. These um, crenellations. Whereas if it was Scouts Guard, they would be able to fire up and over those crenellations. And lob the arrows over. Uh, because they're able to fire more at a 45 degree angle um, and then return the arrow back down. So again, uh, they would be able to fire the arrows up and over the wall and come down and still be effective. Where if your men just fire vertically, meaning they fire straight up into the air and then shoot them down, the missiles are very ineffective, generally speaking. Except for in some very specific circumstances, which you will see in this video. Uh, which I debated a long time over showing you because it's such a secret strategy <laughs> to make public. And it's such an effective strategy too. It completely changes the way that the game is played. Now the first movement we're going to see out here, kind of transitioning from uh, some advice into the actual gameplay. You're going to see Rogue moving some longbowmen out here uh, to start shooting at Kubla as we see um, that weak point of the wall, the last section of the long wall there coming down. 
Uh, we'd already had uh, a few shots going off here. You can see some cannon crew uh, being killed. Rogue, of course, wanting to take out Kublis Cannon since he's so isolated over here. Now, here you're going to see my Scots Guard up here on the wall, and you're going to see another good example of that lobbing over the wall. See, if this was a crossbow unit and I was trying to get them to fire this direction, they wouldn't be able to do that very effectively. Whereas, because, because again, these crenellations would be in the way of them shooting. So, because I'm able to use Scots Guard, which have both a high missile damage, comparatively to other archers, and armor piercing, they're able to hit different angles than crossbowmen. And still be very effective. So that's why I have a mixture, both of crossbows and archers, so I can utilize the different angles uh, effectively in the game. Whereas England, they have a lot of longbowmen, but they don't have crossbows. The other problem is archers use up their ammo far quicker. Now, they have the same amount of shots, but the animation for firing uh, is much quicker. So longbowmen use their ammo up a lot quicker. But Scots Guard are very competent in melee, uh, so that's not that big of a concern. Especially in the expansions, um, where generally stats are lower, it makes archers more competent in melee. So here you're going to see, so this is the angle I'm talking about. See how they're firing at a 45 degree angle, and they're going over these siege towers, and then they're coming down and hitting this cannon crew? Uh, that's what I'm talking about that would not be possible with crossbowmen. Uh, the crossbowmen would be firing at a much lower angle here, and you'd have a lot of shots hitting those siege towers. Now, I did bring out a unit of chivalric knights here, and this was just a complete blunder on my part. I'd never even noticed uh, this unit of Danish cavalry. I was focused uh, on the other side moving men around, and I didn't notice that cavalry unit coming until right about now. And I'm, yep, there you can see I tried to move him right at the end, and he's going to kill, oh, probably half of that unit. Yeah, 29, 28, and he's not going to lose a single horse. Now, the reason you saw me retreating uh, and running away, you might think that counterintuitive, but it's actually got quite a lot of purpose. He's also going to get a really, really good charge here on Rogue's Longbowman, too. Uh, I'm going to rush some pikes out just to try to deter him. But very, uh, very effective play there from Russian King. And he's going to cycle around and try to get another charge off on my knights uh, here in a moment. And interestingly enough, my pikemen... So many things to bring up and talk about. Uh, pike units in Medieval 2 do not function very well in gaps. Uh, so you don't want to put your pikes in gaps in the wall. Because you're going to see they're going to be completely ineffective uh, at dealing with this cavalry unit. Uh, armored sergeants would have been far better of a use there. Now, you're going to see a lot of Armored Sergeants in this as well. Uh, armored Sergeants are very good in the expansions. They're not the trash that they are in vanilla. They actually have the same stats as Feudal Knights, uh, but they have 60 men in the unit. Now, they do have a slight malice against infantry, but it's really not that big of an issue uh, at all. They still perform very well, and they take forever to cut through. So they're very good to protect archer, you know, to protect the, um, the entrances from getting to archers on the wall, because they have to cut through all 60 men. Now, we do have some skirmishing going on over here. Uh, some better action going on between uh, England and Denmark, between Rogue and Russia. And you see he's obliterated this crossbow militia unit. But here is the secret angle that I'm telling you about. Now, defying, completely defying physics, uh, you're going to see this crossbow unit fire at what you would think to be an incredibly useless angle. See how they're lobbing them up like that? But actually, when units are blobbed up on the wall like this, the missiles, <laughs> and, I, and I'm not saying this uh, facetiously, but they kind of get like a heat-seeking effect to them, where you're going to see they, they, like, they, they specifically target these units, and so almost all the missiles are going to hit uh, when you'd think they almost never should. So you're going to see this unit uh, start to drop pretty heavily with that volley. Of course, that volley only kills one guy, but uh, you'll see throughout the course of the battle that uh, putting archers here beneath the wall and having them lob shots up over to men on the wall is actually very effective uh, at killing units. So here's another, here's another volley coming down. Of course, when I try to show you guys, it's, it's ineffective, but um, you'll see a lot of examples of it from the battle. And of course, these are just 
crossbow malicious. They're not going to do as good of a job as Pavis Crossbowman anyway. Now, I think my Scots Guard are going to get a couple of shots off here. I may have already done it. I'm eventually going to kind of move them out to here as well. There you can see the devastation of uh, those two cavalry charges. Uh, currently, we're losing by 1% because of our complete uh, incompetency over here. Again, very bad plays by myself. Um, and it wasn't really Rogue's fault. I told him I would protect his archers, and I didn't. So I can't really say it was a bad play by Rogue. It was just me playing badly. Hmm. So we got a little lull in the action here as I kind of sweep around the battlefield. Ooh, we got a music change. You can tell there hasn't been much action because the music is starting to calm down. So you can see Tiger status, uh, Portugal here, had shifted over here, and now he shifted all the way back over here. So they're trying to figure out where they want him to attack. Got some pikes up here protecting his basilisk. And he's got some Jeanettes as well. And I've got some Scots Guard here so that they can kind of fire and cover this angle. And I've got my Arquebus up on top of the gate here. Uh, they're firing at nothing. <laughs> and maybe we should do a little bit of two times speed here. One thing that uh, is very notorious about high-level battles is that they take a very long time to play. You can see this is 60, 64,000 uh, time units here. Uh, very, very long battle. It's probably a three-hour battle to play, and that's with minimal lag. Another Sally coming out from Rogue here. Just going to try to shoot at the cannon a little bit more. And I've got a lot more infantry now protecting. And Sherwoods are also very nice here in the expansions. A lot of the unit stats and unit abilities change from expansions to vanilla. And in my opinion, the expansions are far more balanced um, in the way units interact and work than they are in vanilla. And so a lot of the veteran players are starting to move uh, to the expansions now and playing primarily on the expansions. And I think that's a good thing because expansions also... Of course, bring in new units and everything, which changes the game dynamics. Now you're going to see these units just lobbing their crossbows up over the wall. It's not the most effective use of ammo, but it will kill men. Especially when defenders are blobbed up like this. Um, but here you can see there's a lot of dead guys up on the wall. That was from these crossbow militia firing up uh, onto them. And again, you'll see more of that this game. It's, very, it's a relatively new strategy. Uh, and it's very effective because most people think that putting archers like here, that they're going to be perfectly safe. But if I were to put a crossbow unit right here and fire up and over, I could devastate this unit. Um, of course, with several volleys, but I, I would still be able to do it. So there's a lot of strategies and things to cover uh, in these videos. And that's really what... I like to try to do. That's kind of where I see, you know, whenever I do these videos, and of course, you know, I don't do them super regularly, but when I do, um, that's what I like to do, is I like to cover strategy and tactics uh, more so necessarily than cinematics even. Of course, I want it to be nice and entertaining for you guys, and I think this battle will be uh, very much so to you. But I primarily want to show you how to play the game, because... It, I've loved this game for years. I've been a part of the community for, shoot, half of my life. <laughs> so, I've seen this game evolve and change a lot. And I like to bring that to you guys um, as, as that happens for me. So, that, that's kind of where I see myself. And I think that's uh, some powerful content to bring that I feel is not provided by most other you know, Total War type YouTube channels. They kind of just focus on these big... Oh, yeah, see here you can see where the lobbing over the walls is actually pretty effective. Uh, you can see there's quite a few guys dead here. So most people think firing up and over the walls like this just doesn't work. It does. Um, it does work. And that's why I said, you know, old tactics reused can be very effective. Anyway, I was talking about something else. Yeah, so a lot of other, you know, the other big Total War channels... I think, and of course, I, I have no intention whatsoever of ever getting big or anything like that. In fact, I'd prefer not to because i got a lot of other things that, you know, take far higher priority of my time than Total War. But um, I think 
what I try to do when I make videos is I want to show you high level of play, high level of tactics, as opposed to just focusing on cinematics and just seeing people play the game mindlessly in big armies clashing into each other with no organization, no tactics, no skill, no manipulation of game mechanics. Um, I want to bring you, because that's what I find to be fun. You know, someone who likes strategy games, I like seeing the strategy and the tactics. I think that's fun. And so that's what I like to bring to the table for you guys. And people like that, great. They can watch my videos. If not, then that's awesome too. You know, I'm very happy with the just small amount of people that watch my videos. And anyway, I'll quit ranting about that because you guys want to see the game, not hear me rant about uh, about all that kind of stuff. So here again, you can see the crossbows lobbing over the walls. And this is just them trying to soften up the defenders. So that way they can eventually get their crossbows up onto the walls. And so what I told, uh, what Rogue and I decided to do and uh, to tell Lavernicus to do is just to hug the walls with the men so they take minimal casualties. Now, we are continuing to lose on the balance of power. Uh, at least very minorly at the beginning. 5% to 3%. The other thing you'll notice uh, that's changed quite a bit is you'll see there's not a lot of holes in the wall. There's only one so far on this entire wall, and normally there would be just holes everywhere along this wall. But instead they focused on taking all the towers down and making a solitary breach uh, that they're going to fire through, as you can see here, getting some direct shots and some units that used to be there and soften up and then systematically moving through into the castle. And that is, that's what I love about medieval two sieges is there's such a, uh, there's such a precedent for systematics within the game, uh, for being for systematic strategies, for moving systematically through the siege you don't just rush in there and charge your army into one big blob. It's it's one step at a time. It's taking one objective and then moving on to the to another. It's a big game of tug of war where you're just trying to get your foot in, capture a little ground, get some men on the wall, fire down. You know what your objectives are and you're systematically moving through trying to achieve those objectives to put yourself in the proper spot to get the right geometry to win the battle. That's the proper psychology of an effective Medieval 2 Total War Siege player. Is to be patient, to be systematic, to move one, one objective at a time, to put yourself in the proper position to maximize the geometry and efficiency of your units to win the battle. And that's exactly what our attackers are doing. Now, notice they're not taking any missile fire being up on this wall, but they're able to return missile fire just raining it down over the wall on these people, which normally you'd think wouldn't be that effective. But when it's in mass like this, it can be quite effective. And so what our strategy was, knowing that they would do this, because this is the way that the meta of the game, at least with our very niche uh, group that we play with, that's kind of the way it's evolved into. So the way we changed our strategy is now we, we've kind of seeded the walls to their archers, and then we prepared a counter archer force down here at the bottom. So whenever they come up on the walls, we're just going to shoot the crap out of them on top of the walls. And so whenever, whenever a new strategy is introduced to the game, you have to be able to adapt to it. Whenever players uh, bring a new tactic, you have to adapt and reciprocate the strategy. And that's exactly what we were doing. So instead of just sitting on top of the walls and getting shot, we adapted to it, and then we are able to create an effective resistance to that strategy by putting archers down here. And that, uh, that again, that's another thing to incorporate into the philosophy of the effective siege player, is to be able to adapt to different strategies quickly. And by understanding the units and the maps and the abilities of your units, you can generally create effective counterplay to different plays.
Again, another Sally outside. Uh, some small skirmishes with Turkey. There's going to be quite a bit of this uh, positioning that's going to go on before the decisive moments of the siege. Now, we do have a small engagement over here with some house carls. And they are fighting some armored sergeants. Now, again, due to the stat changes in the expansions, both Huskarls and armored sergeants are both far better than they ever would be in vanilla. However, in the expansions, Huskarls cause fear. Um, they frighten nearby enemy infantry. They have that tagline. But everybody's general is still alive, so it's not going to make a big difference. But the strategy that uh, Russian King and Teutonic are doing here is they sent one unit in in the hopes that three or four of our units would blob up to try to attack them. And we did. We fell for the strategy. We fell for that. And so now they've got all of these archer units just blasting this blob of our guys. And so they're continuing with this 2% advantage that they've got, 7% uh, to 5%, um, by kind of sacrificing one unit in order to be able to just rain missile fire down. You can see this broken lance down to 37 from 48. Uh, these armored sergeants down to half strength. Uh, we've got some yeoman archers that looks like almost dead. And those armored sergeants down to two-thirds strength. So our first little engagement going on there. But I want to point that out uh, on what happened too. You see how they're not just needlessly throwing men away. How every play has an intent and a strategy behind it it's not just throwing an infantry unit into the castle it's strategically sending one infantry unit in to allow all of your archers to maximize their value of fire i mean you can just see the um quite a lot of men died there because of that blob and so when you when you want to go into actually playing this game competitively and playing it effectively you have to have a strategy. You have to have intent. You have to have purpose behind every move that you do and behind everything that you do with your unit. So you see, I have my Scots guard up here. I was getting some shots down on his cannon here. I actually reduced him down a cannon because my Scots guard were able to uh, kill a couple of the crew, and I didn't want to use up too much ammo, uh, but I wanted to get him down a cannon there. And again, we have a Sally out by Rogue over here. We got some Sherwoods covering there. So the Sherwoods have a pretty good angle. They can fire at anything that comes in. And they can also, again, because of the arc that archers have, they can fire over this wall and provide cover uh, in this general circle. Now this Aventurier unit over here is, is great because they can cover anything that comes in here. They can cover the walls. I got this Scots Guard to cover as well. And I'm eventually going to bring another missile unit over here to cover this corner so they can't sneak missile units up and start shooting my guys on the wall. So again, play, counterplay, intent behind the positioning and the utilization of your units. Now the, the argument, the, the argumentation to be had with what's going over here and the strategy that the attackers are employing uh, that is up for debate is... Whether or not all of that missile firing over the wall is actually worth it. So, yes, they have obtained a current 3% uh, advantage. However, and, you know, they, they, they've shot a lot of our guys. And you can see they've, they've kind of withered us down a little bit. Um, especially over there. Uh, some good withering over here. Uh, we've got some... Uh, Holy Roman Empire, Pavis Crossbowmen, and see, they're trying to do the, the strategy up here on my Aventurier. I'm running them off the wall as quick as I can so they don't die. But notice how I'm utilizing uh, my different units. This Scots Guard had been firing over here and actually was kind of wrecking these Pavis Crossbowmen. So, again, this is a counterplay to a play. So the strategy that they're trying to employ is to put their archers here now, so that way he can fire up and hit my men. I counterplay by putting my Scots Guard there to shoot him. Now he's counterplaying my counterplay. The the inception is growing deeper. So knowing the angle that my Scots Guard can shoot at, they don't have an effective angle when he's this far back. So now he's got an uncontested angle to fire at my Aventurier. So great great play by uh, by Teutonic there. 
and there's not really much I can do to counterplay it, so I have to take that unit off the wall. So that's the only counterplay I have to his counterplay of my counterplay to his play, <laughs> if, if you follow that. <laughs> and that's how you have to be thinking during these games, is how do I react to what the other team is bringing towards me. Now, again, they, they've still maintained a 3% bonus there. We don't have a whole lot of action going on over here yet. Uh, do we have any more going on over here? Not entirely. Uh, with what I was saying over here, yes, they've killed some percentage of our men. Yes, they've had some success, but they have used up a lot of ammo. And they have lost some men doing it, too. So I, I'm not sure how effectively... I, I'm not sure how effective the return on investment to that tactic is. I think... While they did achieve some success in getting some kills, I think they used up more ammo uh, than the value that they got in shooting it. That would be, that, that's my opinion. So I don't think that the value in enemies killed that they've gotten is worth the amount that they have expended of value in ammunition. And you have to make sure when you're playing that you're getting value out of every move that you do that you're maximizing your potential value uh, in the moves that you make now here Kubla is using these siege towers to block the angles of my Scots guard which is fine and I'm not really using a whole lot of ammo out of them anyway so it's a good strategy but at the same time I think Kubla's I, I think it's uh, <laughs> it's kind of vain it's it's not really worth it and He's not even really wasting the stamina because he's using town militia or whatever to push the siege tower. So who cares? Um, but I guess it makes him feel better that I don't have good angles here on my Scots guard. But it is an effective strategy to use siege towers as effectively giant shields so I can't shoot out, shoot out to his men. Ooh, we got some mortars going here. Uh, looks like probably, yeah, over into this kind of uh, clump of units. I think we're going to see some mortars fire. Uh, we've got some more missiles going over the wall, and I guess time will tell uh, what the ROI, what the return on investment is uh, for this strategy of firing directly over the walls onto our men. I'm not sure if, while they're going to get kills, I'm not sure that the amount of kills that they get is far greater than the amount of value they expend, uh, both in the stamina of their archers and in the ammo used, but time will tell. So now I've swapped out, I've put my Arquebus up on this wall in the hopes that they would be able to shoot a little bit more effectively over here and because I needed to reposition uh, those Arventurio over here. So that way they can cover both anything up on this wall and everything down there as well. So I'm kind of preparing to let Kubla in here. Uh, and then I'm going to hold him off at this corner is the plan. So many strategies to cover. So many plays and counterplays to cover, but that is, um, that's how high-level play is. That's how competitive play in this game is. You can't just rush your guys in and hope for the best. You have to have intention behind your moves. And so that's why there's so much strategizing and angling and, and just inching your men right into the right spot because we know we have to maximize our value for everything that we do. And so that's why you see so much intentiveness behind everything that's done notice how on both sides the men are hugging the wall so that they're not exposed to missile fire uh, everything is a maximization of value and a minimization of loss watch some of these shots come down here so yeah i mean we got to, we got six men out of this norman knight unit uh this armored sergeant's still full Ooh, that one's down to 39 uh, retinue's down to 33, so you know they are doing some damage. What are the percentages now? 10 to 7, so it's it's remaining an even 3% difference. And I got some Aventurier up here to kind of cover these walls. So they actually can reach uh, most of these walls here, just barely. So if they put anything on those walls, these guys can hit them. That way they're protected because they weren't over here. <laughs> And I just, I don't think my Arquebus are quite firing. I don't think they can quite hit these guys. That tower corner is just in the way there. All right, maybe we'll speed it up a little bit here for a minute until something happens. I, 
I know we've spent the first part of this battle really going over a lot of strategy and, and a lot of um, philosophical uh, nuances to this game. But this thing is action-packed. I'm bringing it to you for a reason. I mean, this is, this is a really fun and a very close battle. Uh, we just got to get to the action part. Oh, we had a couple crossbowmen try to rush in there and some armored sergeants plucking them off. Looks like they're going to try to uh, shoot at them with some handguns and crossbows. Looks like they're going to get out of there in time. All right, let's see. Anything much going on with Turkey? Got more siege towers being moved up by the town militia. Thin line of uh, armored sergeants here just blocking the hole for the moment. Eleven eight, continuing that three percent uh, difference there. Ooh, we got some ladders up right over here. It looks like we got some pike militia. So I think what they're hoping with these, number one, they're putting the ladder up so they can get crossbows or whatever up on the wall. The other thing that I would be trying to goad my opponent in with that would be to put a unit up here so my crossbows could shoot at them. Here you can see a couple more men on the wall getting taken out by the crossbow lobbing on the wall. More arrows coming over. And this is a good angle because they get to um, they get to ignore uh, the shield's only going to get 50% coverage from that angle because they're coming in from the flank. So they get to ignore uh, some of the missile defense. Now, <laughs> look at how loaded this wall is. I've got, uh, what, three missile units here. And this was another part of my strategy. So you'll remember, most of my forces were over here. I was looking like I was going to defend this corner. And so Kubla put a breach here. He knocked out all these towers. But that used up most of his ammo. And so now, where I'm actually holding over here, he doesn't necessarily have the cannon ammo to make a lot of breaches over here or possibly even get that tower. So I'm being deceptive with where I put my men. I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not showing off what I'm going to do. I'm concealing where I'm actually going to defend until they've used up their ability to counter my placement, at least as much as possible. I, he still has some artillery ammo left, and he'll be able to do a little bit here. But I'm not just showing the moves that I'm going to make. I'm not just going to show them exactly where I'm going to fend. I'm going to make them guess and use up ammo and use up resources before they get to where I'm actually going to make my stand. And so that's why I decided to hold this corner. And this is a very defensible corner. Uh, anything that comes in here is just absolutely dead. And if he tries to come around this way and shoot my men, I can put a unit here and shoot them back. So... It's a very defensible position, which is, of course, why I chose it. <laughs> and I got it on double speed here. Just going to try to get through a little bit. Uh, crossbows continuing to lob over here. It looks like uh, we, we've got a bit of a... Oh, we've got some crossbow militia up on the wall here. And I think I have not targeted them yet. So they're firing down onto this path. It looks like we're going to have some longbowmen coming up there. Uh, yeah, my my Aventurier don't have the best angle, so I'm not I'm not shooting with them right now. But yeah, of course they they're gonna route very quickly to that. And that actually was looks like it was a negative uh, value trade with those crossbow militia because now we're to a two percent discrepancy as opposed to a three. Granted, it was just crossbow militia, so it's not a big loss. Whew, a lot of talking. <laughs> <laughs> been a long day at work for me today i i work on saturdays so i figured i had a little bit of time this evening we'd do a commentary because i was gonna play a game but then uh, nobody was online so sometimes that happens and i figured it'd be a good opportunity to just jump on here and play a game or at least watch a replay and commentate on that for you guys so we got some hashishim bringing the towers up over here and it's an interesting strategy that they did, putting Kubla over here uh, and then all other three players over there. And the way that we responded to that is I essentially have Lavernicus and Rogue, England and Sicily, uh, taking these two on 
and essentially using up all of their ammo and all their resources. And then I just have to focus on Kubla. And then the hope is that uh, I would have the majority of my army left to deal with whatever is left from over here. So I'm kind of keeping my army in reserve and allowing uh, the majority of their team over here to use up all of their resources and units and things on my allies. So now we've got another breach opened up. Again, another example of shadowing your movements, of not displaying your moves. Um, that's why the, the game has kind of changed now to where you don't just immediately start putting holes in the walls. Because if you take the towers down first, then you can decide later where you're going to put the holes. And so you can more effectively um, determine uh, where you want to put your breach based on where the enemy's defenses are the weakest. So it's it's a better idea to take the towers down first and then focus on breaches. So that way, and then also the defenders don't know exactly where you're going to go through, so it makes it harder for them to defend against you. So again, uh, the defenders doing very good plays here. Going to speed it up a little bit. And let's try to at least get you guys. Isn't that sunset just beautiful back there behind the castle? I, uh, Jamie Dodger was the one who um, told me that uh, sunset's the best time to play sieges. And oh, I completely agree with him. It's such a beautiful backdrop. And as you can see, we're a little bit over halfway through the battle here. And we've got some Norse Axemen, which are good in the expansions. Uh, while they are just complete trash and vanilla, they are good here. Very good here, actually. And continuing to have that missile barrage, we are uh, now at a consistent 2% uh, variance ratio on the percentages, as opposed to what was a 3%. And you can see my allies' armies are kind of getting shot up. My army is completely intact and fresh and full of ammo and everything. And the only thing I have to worry about is Turkey. England's got a couple of units over here, um, but the vast majority of his army is, is, is focused over there. And it looks like we do have Turkey finally moving up to the walls here. Do we have any ingress by the attackers in here yet? Not quite. Kind of similar position to where we were a little bit ago. Let's throw double speed on here. Hmm. This is why I wanted to bring this battle to you guys, because there's so much strategy in this. And now we're hopefully going to get to the fun part here in just a moment where we're going to start to see a lot more action coming in. And again, that's that's another thing you'll notice that's different between casual and competitive play. When the action comes, it's short and decisive. There's a lot of maneuvering and prolonging to get to that combat, but once that combat happens, it happens. And that's when the game's decided. So that's why you see all this maneuvering, uh, is people are trying to get themselves in the best position possible before they start that decisive combat. So we got a few fire arrows coming through here. Some armored sergeants. Uh, certain rogue will move momentarily to uh, avoid that. And then I have some knights up here to protect my Scots guard in case he tries to go up any of these siege towers. And of course, if he does try to go up the siege towers, we'll turn the mortars on and <laughs> obliterate whatever goes up the towers. And now they're just waiting for Tiger Status to move his army over here so they can attack all three together. And there's another example of that shadowing the movements. Tiger wanted us to deploy over here facing his army when his intent was actually to come over and attack from here. Now, his intent may have changed. I don't know whether it did or not, if that was their plan from the beginning. But regardless, now he's attacking over here instead of over here. Ah, and I switched this out for Scotsguard because they have better angles to cover over there. 
And where did I move? Oh, yeah, I got Aventurier over here. <coughs> over here now. Music to this game is so beautiful. Not a whole lot that these Turkish archers are going to be able to do through there. Again, they're just shooting some pot shots at uh, these spread out armored sergeants. Not going to be terribly effective. And we're continuing to see the, the downpour of the crossbowmen. And now we're back up to a 3% variance because they're getting some good shots over here. <clears throat> as Lavernicus has kind of uh, not hugged the walls anymore. Handgunners uh, utilizing this gap. And another unit uh, that is very powerful in the expansions that's Trash and Vanilla, the Abudshire and Halberds in general. Um, this is one of the most powerful units in this expansion, the Abudshire. Halberds are very effective in the expansions. Uh, for more information, please watch my video on making halberds work. Although that's actually for vanilla. So halberds can be very effective in vanilla, but they are just lawnmowers uh, in the expansions, especially if you combine my halberd strategy with it. Then they're, you know, then they're, they're real lawnmowers. They're riding lawnmowers. They're John Deere's, you know. <laughs> so here you can see some good angles from those retinue longbowmen. You're going to knock out some of these uh, Pavis crossbowmen there. Oh, and we've got some action over here. So, Aventurier going to fire right down onto all these Turkish archers. Scott's Guard going to get some shots here. So, there you can see how some of these archers... Oh, nope, I'm just going to turn them off because they're not going to get good shots. And you're going to see my, Aven, my Aventurier are just going to absolutely rip up those archers. And the Turkish archers don't have the armor piercing to get through the armor of my Aventurier. So, already we're down 40 and 40 on this unit. Got some Hashishim coming in. And I think I'm going to bring another unit up over here eventually. I've only lost one Aventurier so far, and he's got three units firing. And look, yeah, they're already down to 35. Oh, there's another one gone. And yeah, so I'm going to bring this Scots Guard over here so that way I can get two units firing. Uh, we'll come back to that action momentarily. Just want to monitor everything over here. Gothic Knights, uh, very good in the expansions. Terrible in vanilla. <laughs> ah. We do have some action going on. So now we've got some English Knights going to take on these Huskarls, and I'm certain we're going to have uh, some Mortars firing in very soon. And hopefully some Pavis Crossbowmen getting into position. Swordsman Militia going to pour in through this gap here, try to trap uh, some of these units here. And we got to start... So we've got one unit up here on the wall so far. This Pavis needs to get out of there right away. I think they were kind of unprepared for this. Or at least they're not reacting super quickly. Maybe they're letting them in. Yeah, they're, they're now, now the mortars are starting to get online. And now my Scots Guard are online. They're going to really start tearing. Yeah, down to 26 uh, and 7. Wow, they just got trashed. And I've only lost uh, 10 Aventurier and 1 Scots Guard. So that's very beneficial trade for me. We'll continue to monitor the situation over there. But this is, of course, where the main action is. Now, the Pavis crossbowmen here, uh, they got caught up in that melee. They're going to run out there. He was probably trying to get them up on the wall, and they just didn't make it up there. Gothic Knights in the fray. Oh, Feudal Knight killing Gothic. Oh, oh, that guy's wrecking him. He already got two. Is he, is he going to get three? Oh, he killed three. Man, this guy's a hero. A hero of his people. Alright. Continuing to contain the situation here. We're getting some yeoman archers up on the wall there uh, to fire down on this. Do we have any Frenchmen? Yes, we've got the Scots Guard. See, this is what I'm talking about. See how they're lobbing the arrows up and down? And so now my, uh, my Scots Guard are just wrecking these Norse Axemen from all the way up there on the gate. A crossbow unit couldn't do that. That's why I swapped them out for the Scots Guard up here. See how they're able to lob their shots like that? That's what I'm talking about. And we've already got those, uh, what is it? Yeah, Norse Axemen wavering. And mortars, I'm certain, are going to be decimating that quite, uh, quite
quite fervently. We've got some Ottoman infantry firing at uh, probably over here. And let's see, what's the Scots Guard? Are they shooting back at that? Uh, yes, they are. Yeah, so here you can see, again, that's what I'm talking about with the archer angles that crossbows couldn't do. I just want to give you guys as many examples as I can of that. But even though I'm getting that good angle, I'm not getting that good result. So I'm not going to keep shooting them uh, for much longer. So I'm just going to be, yeah, I've already turned them off. So I'm just going to be using up ammo unnecessarily. I can just disengage from that fight and retain my ammo and get better value that way. Let's get back to the action over here. So we've still got these Pavis crossbowmen firing. And how are my Scots Guard? Scots Guard have halted. It uh, looks like we've kind of contained this situation over here. Mortars have turned off momentarily, it appears. And we've got some riders coming in. Um, they're going to try to route whatever they can with their pistols, of course. Probably going to be very effective at that. Surprised we don't have more archer units up on these walls. Uh, we do have a unit of 18 retinues firing down here. And this Pavis really should be up on the walls. Not sure uh, why that is, but these Feudal Knights will be just fine against the, the Aventuras. The Conquistors will, of course, cut through them, but we'll, we'll be all right. <laughs> and you'll see the moment they get any archers on the wall, all this stuff is going to start shooting at them. Now those Ottoman infantry, what are they shooting at? Oh, they're shooting at these uh, spearmen here. That's okay. They're just basically using up their ammo at this point. And we killed those two units almost entirely. So, so far everything going good with Turkey. And now uh, we've actually turned, we've actually flipped it. So now instead of having a 2% deficit, uh, we have a 2% advantage. So we've managed to take the lead uh, very minorly here. Of course, all because of the excellent work of my Scots Guard routing these Norse Axemen. Dude, look at that. Look at the devastation that those Scots Guard caused. And uh, we did have one unit of Pavis up here probably helping with that too. Not sure. Huskarls, uh, shaken. Steady. Kind of alternating. We got one unit wavering in there. We got some uh, Norman Knights coming in. And here come the dreaded Obudshire. Uh, very, very slowly. <laughs> Is the downside of halberds, they, they walk very slowly. <laughs> and the Imperial and Gothic Knights. Gothic Knights going to go... Now the English Knights are going to win this fight very handily. Well, not very handily, but they will win it. And what do we got? Armored Sergeants versus Imperial Knights. That's probably, probably about even as well. But it looks like the defenders, uh, the attackers are... Making steady progress over here. One mortar firing, so Lavernicus is uh, conserving his ammo. We do have some more archers firing over here. And they're actually getting some pretty good kills. But again, archers don't have a ton of ammo, so firing at one unit in loose formation really probably isn't the best utilization of that ammo, uh, in my opinion. I don't know that he's really going to get his money worth. His money's worth. So now we have uh, the Turkish cannon. Uh, they're going to try to break that wall down. And I am going to move in time, I think, uh, to avoid getting... Yep, there we go. So we got uh, that... Oh, oh. Ah, I am going to lose a few Scots Guard there. I lose two. Yeah, I lose two Scots Guard. He loses a couple uh, retinues. And, of course, then we're just going to run the other direction. <laughs> oh, can it run the other way now because that wall is falling down. And ah, some Aventuria. Going to get some nice shots over here on the Pavis. Let's see how that goes. Get them, boys. Get them. So there you can see most of my men are not getting a good angle there. This would have been a better spot for Scotsguard. Uh, because they're having to fire over these crenellations, crossbows can't arc, therefore they fire at the 90 degree as opposed to the 45. So very uh, inefficient firing there by me. Now we do have uh, the Forlorn Hope, a very powerful unit in Britannia. Very powerful because they get two hit points and very good stats in this. And they have pushed through. 
and they're going to get around and flank these English knights, and the Obuchao are going to absolutely tear through these English knights. Here, we'll watch this. I just want you guys to see how powerful these Obuchao are. Uh, English knights are some of the best units in the expansion, and they're just getting... They've only lost one Obuchao so far, and they've killed probably, what, like 10, 15 of the... Yeah. Look at, they are massacring them. And of course, they got the Forlorn Hope butchering them from the back, too. But, yeah, details. <clears throat> they did very well. And so that's what I mean, halberds are very effective in this. More English Knights going to come in to take on these Forlorn Hope. And the battle against the Moors has kind of calmed down at this point. I must have gotten the Scots Guard down, around, and over to here. Got <clears throat> a unit Arquebus down here, ready to go. That unit of our Venturio. Now we got the Scots Guard getting ready to fire. Let's see what they're going to fire at. Are they going to do the same angle? They are. Oh, look at those beautiful, beautiful shots. Oh, and they're going to tear up these Conquistadors. Well, they killed a couple of them. Yeah, three. So maybe not tear up, but they will do. Some good damage on these Conquistadors. Oh, there's there's one. Two. Anyway, three. Okay, yeah, they're doing some damage. It's not amazing. Oh, that's why, because I'm getting them off. I'm going to swap them out again. I'm swapping my units around again. Depending on where they put their men, I need to get the right angles. need to maximize my, my, my shots. So now the Scots Guard are going to come off. I think I'm going to get them... Probably over here, I would imagine. And I do not have the Aventurier firing right away. Ah, but here, now they've got crossbowmen up on the walls. We've got Lavernicus's crossbowmen down here. And we're going to start having that crossbow exchange. So they're getting some decent shots over there. Ah, here, this is where I brought those. That's why I took the Scots Guard off, so I could have these Aventurier. Oh, and they're, they're going to tear that. Oh, look at those beautiful shots. And now we're still maintaining that 2% advantage. These Aventurier, I think I'm going to move them over to here or so. I'm going to try to get a better, uh, better angle over there. Again, Turkish side, pretty calm right now. And where are my Arquebus? I think I was going to do something with the Arquebusier. Got all, see, still, oh, there they are. I still have a ton of infantry. My army is... And this is where my general is. And this is one of the cool things with Shiltron. Notice my general is in the middle. So he's got the entire unit protecting him. So it would be very difficult for them to kill my general. One unit of English knights holding all of these guys back. And we've got... Have his crossbowmen. My Aventurier, of course, uh, still dealing out some major casualties to the guys on the wall and now this unit's gonna fire on them too let's get this angle come on now let's get this angle come on oh my gosh okay yeah they're <laughs> sorry the game's getting really choppy it's really not letting me get a good good picture there is it we shall have victory and get the good shot all right there oh look at that beautiful Yes, look there. Look at those beautiful shots going in. Now that is some serious value we're getting on these Pavis crossbow. We are, and then these this Aventurio back here is tearing them up too. So that's uh, that's really not going so hot for them. Uh, we have some more Ottoman infantry, and that's going to go the same way as the last one did. They're going to get torn to crap, but. That's why I chose to hold here. He really doesn't have a choice. He has to engage me. And it's not going to go that well. He's already down eight men just from that first volley. And now we've got their archer. Oh, man, look at all the guys they lost up here. Jeez. They're continuing to push this way and pushing rather successfully. I've got some uh, Shieldwork Knights over here holding, and I think I'm going to run some Swiss Guard. These guys I'm repositioning just to get better angles over there. 
Uh, these guys I'm going to get onto the walls. They're going to get some very good shots. Uh, how are those Ottoman infantry doing? Yeah, I've lost another five Aventurier, but <laughs> they've, they've lost uh, nine. Yeah, they've lost another nine guys from the Ottoman infantry from where we were at before. And here we've got a giant blob fight. Now I got my Aventurier getting up on the wall here. And I believe I'm going to bring in some Swiss pikes. There they are. And I'm gonna have my I'm gonna show you guys my pike strategy being utilized here uh, in the expansions uh, once these guys get into that fight. But oh, these Aventuri are gonna just absolutely decimate these guys. Yes, look at that. Oh, oh, <laughs> that is just now. See, this is them utilizing. This is uh, Tiger status using the pike strategy effectively. The Aventurier are, are cutting through these Norman Knights very effectively, but now we got the Swiss Pikes coming in. The Swiss Pikes are going to do some bidness. So now he's turned his Pavis onto me here, so I kind of have to respond to that. And I'm hoping that these Longbowmen will help get rid of those Pavis. And I have one unit Chivalric Knights back here holding as well. So now the Swiss Pikes will come. Yep, here they go. So now you're going to see they're going to start advancing with their Pikes. Uh, kind of. We'll come back in a minute when they do that. They will do it, I promise. More uh, archers up on the wall here, but really they're not doing a ton of value, and we're managing to hold them off pretty well. Oh, I am going to bring the Arquebus up too. Yeah, we're doing okay over there. Uh, let's check out the Swiss Pikes. Ah, here we go. There you can see the pikes all spawning in, and now they're going to drop the pikes down. Yes! Get them! And now they're going to start absolutely decimating this blob here, that one unit of the Swiss pikes. Uh, for more information, please watch my Making Pikes Work in Medieval 2 video. 31 Aventurier, and yeah, that Ottoman infantry unit's pretty much dead. Uh, they got down to 26, it looks like. What do we got over here? That one down to 43. That one's full strength down to 45. Some Janissary muskets up here are going to cause me a little bit of trouble. Uh, I'm going to have to uh, fall back a little bit because those Janissaries will they'll, they'll tear me up good. So I'm going to fall back uh, a little bit further here just to get out of range of his Janissaries because the muskets do have a, a range advantage. Alright, these Aventuria, they should be firing at some of those crossbows over there. And we've got some more holes in the wall. That is over here on this flank. They just opened up that hole. And my Swiss Pikes, about half strength, but look, they've already pushed them. The The fight used to be here, and now the fight's back here. So the Pikes have completely pushed them back. Uh, my Aventurier up here, oh, they kind of got killed, didn't they? Um, but we also killed that Pavis unit down to 15. So that was more or less an even trade, and I got some really good damage done. Uh, now we are at a one per oh man, this is a nail biter, guys. Only one percent difference. So this, uh, yeah, this battle is progressing very evenly for both teams. Because now they've managed to get their crossbows up on the wall. They're getting value down here. We're also getting value on them, though. So, uh, relatively speaking, pretty even value trades. Although, again, my army is still fresh and intact for the most part. And this is just completely devolved into chaos. But now there's no archers over there. So my men are, are free to uh, turn their missiles to fire down now. And you'll see that happening here. And there you go. We got some beautiful shots in. Going to knock down some of these Obud Shire. Got a fresh... Uh, not fresh. There's only 14 of them. Uh, more Pavis up on the walls there. Do we have anything going on with Turkey? Janissaries over here, uh, they have something they can shoot at, but it's not going to be my guys anymore. So now I fall, uh, I've fallen back all the way to over here. So I gave myself enough room to fall back as I needed to. And then I can, again, utilize this wall to fire at anything going through there. And then his Janissaries can't shoot me. So again, I'm, I'm giving myself layers and opportunities to fall back before I commit uh, to a prop, I want to wait until I have the utmost advantageous position before I engage in that decisive combat with Turkey. Now the Scots, oh, 
Oh, that is brutal. Look at those Scots guard. They just wrecked that conquistador unit. Oh, that is beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. That that is that makes me feel so much joy in my heart to see those Scots guard just destroying those conquistadors. <laughs> That's what I mean when infantry doesn't win battles and sieges. Archers do. And the way you get archers to win is by mastering the geometry. And this <clears throat> is very effective geometry. I'm firing directly over. And these Scotsguard will just absolutely destroy those crossbowmen, of course. And they, yeah, they're wavering too. Shaken now. Uh, they're already down to 16. So they're, they're going to be a non-factor here shortly. And my, oh, that's why they're wavering. They got my Arquebus firing at them. So this is another great use um, for Arquebus. People think that only muskets have use because of the range, but Arquebus are great for shooting at units up on the walls because they can route them uh, very easily because they have the gun. So they have two Arquebus firing at these uh, these crossbowmen, which they definitely should be uh, routing, but uh, they're probably the general. Uh, yeah, they got uh, general nearby. Although that's, uh, where's the Danish general? Because that's the HRE general. Well, it's an allied general nearby, so same thing. Ah, here we go. Some more action. Scotsguard going to begin firing. And this was, uh, I'm not sure what was going on here with Turkey, but he has this big line here. And I'm going to take mucho advantage of that uh, as soon as I notice it. We'll check back in a minute. Because these Scots Guard will be shredding that line very soon. My micro is probably very focused over here. Oh yeah, so now I'm going to run the Arquebus over here to start routing those guys. Scots Guard on, Scots Guard not on yet. Now see, he'd been shooting at this Armored Sergeant unit, and he pretty much killed the unit, but he used up a lot of ammo doing it. So I think a lot of uh, the Turkish archers are already running low on ammo. Now we got the Scots Guard on. And this is going to be brutal. They got that whole Turkish army to fire at. You can't even miss if you tried. And we are hitting... Ah, going for the... It uh, looks like the town militia. No, we are probably going for the muskets as they're running through. I wouldn't have targeted the town militia. And if I did, it was a mistake. <laughs> So we've managed to kind of hold them off at this choke point because they don't have enough big units of archers up here to do enough damage to us as we hold the center. So the, the defense is kind of stalled, and now they're focusing over here. Um, but we've got a pretty staunch defense. Now they're going to try to bring the cannon in to fire through here, but we're not going to give them any shots. So now really, uh, 60 to 63. So we've managed to go up to a 3%, but still within 3%. And that's nothing in Medieval 2. That's less than one unit difference. Actually, with four people, it's probably, yeah, it's probably a unit difference. Unit and a half. Because <clears throat> you figure if you have 20 units, each unit is going to be 5% of, um, sorry, each unit is going to be 4% of a person's army. But you got four players. So, yeah, it's it's uh, probably two and a little bit worth of units. It <laughs> doesn't matter. Okay, there's a 3% difference, 61 to 64. So it's very close. I got my Scots Guard off that wall. And, um, this is not going to be a great engagement for me. Those Hashishim are going to cut through my Noble Knights and the Flemish Pikemen pretty well, but they're about to get torn to shreds by these Scots Guard. So it's okay for me to lose the infantry fight, because I'm going to generate so much value from my archers. And these are the trades that you have to make sure that you're getting uh, when you're playing battles like this. That, yeah, it's okay for me to lose the battle if I can win the war. Because these Scots Guard will eat up those, uh, the, uh, the Hashishim. And then I got the Aventurier firing too. So they got three missile units uh, all focused in there. So they're going to take some heavy damage. Let's watch these guys shoot. Beautiful sunset in the background. And it's basically target practice for them. They're shooting fish in a bowl. And you can see those Hashishim are dropping. 
And now we've got some Nafiton moving up. And of course, as soon as they come into range, I'm going to bombard the crud out of them. So now we've got a big push from the attackers over here. The Obuchire, of course, pushing through. And they're going to probably be very effective in this melee fight. Uh, mortars are not firing currently, but we do have quite a few archers firing down into there. Over here we've managed to pretty well hold them back. And my arquebuses keep running around all over the place trying to get to good shots lined up. And we're going to continue firing down here. So see I have this trifecta of archer angles all shooting down here. And there's no way he can get to my archers. This is basically shooting fish in a barrel at this point for those guys. In this Scots Guard, I could even I could move over here and they could shoot. So I could have another unit firing if I noticed that. But that's pretty micro intensive. <clears throat> oh, that's beautiful. Oh, and they're just gonna wreck that. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh. Look at how badly that Janissary Heavy Infantry got killed. And the rest of my units are targeting the NAF. Already down to seven, so he's forced to run the Nafatune back before they could do any major damage. Flemish Pikes didn't do so great, but the Hashishim got uh, pretty well cut down there by the archers. <clears throat> Arquebus going to go ahead and get ready to fire there. And we are we are getting pushed back here towards the center. So again, this, this battle is very close. It's far from over. The uh, Russian King and Teutonic Elite are just such a good uh, combo. And Tiger Status is a great player too. And they are working very well together. And they just keep uh, keep trading very effectively with us over on the side of the wall. But where I think we're going to start turning the balance is I'm going to be able to deal with Turkey uh, in a decisively enough manner where I'm going to have enough men to come over and help my allies. Because I forced Turkey into fighting basically into one choke point. He could come through here, uh, but he's going to face the same problem from the archers if he fights here as if he fights over here. So now we've got the Hashishim routing. Uh, to this noble knight. One thing he could do to have made that a better engagement is he could put archers up here and then he could have used that to fire down and at least made it somewhat of an even engagement. Uh, but again, he'd used up so much of his archer ammo already, he probably didn't have much to spare to do that. And had he have moved men up here, I could have just simply fought him further back where they would have got um, a less optimal angle. See, like, I'm retreating back to here. So then the only place he could really hit me is from here or from here. And if he goes there, then I can use my Pavis here to shoot him, and I can get a unit over here to fire over there. So there's always a counterplay uh, to the plays that they make. You just have to know the map well enough and your units well enough to do that. Continuing to exchange missile fire... Uh, with the men on the wall. Now we got muskets on the wall, but they are going to get, yeah, they're going to get hammered very quickly. So this strategy worked for us. Uh, of course, we've lost a lot of men. They've lost a lot of men. But I think in the end, it'll have been just slightly tilted to our favor. Arquebus is lining up there. My Arquebus getting ready to line up against Turkey. I got one unit of just a couple knights holding back these town militia. Then I thought, what the heck, why not? Some Turkish archers that are out of ammo here. Wow, that's a looks that sword looks very big for him to be holding in one hand. It looks like um Yeah, it looks like a very big sword to be holding in one hand. Especially for an archer. You wouldn't think that an archer would have a big sword. Uh, we got some cav going over here, fighting my chivalric knights uh, along with the riders. And I'm going to bring in some noble knights here, and that's going to force him to run away. And we do have some forlorn hope up here trying to clean out the walls. A very good play uh, by the attackers trying to clear our men off the walls here. So then I'm going to move my aventurier over here, uh, so that way they can start shooting at those forlorn hope. I got some Scots Guard up here fighting. That's really not... Oh, because they're shooting still. Although they're not shooting... Oh, I was having them shoot at the cavalry. Yeah, I got my Noble Knights here fighting those uh, the General Bodyguard. And I think I'm going to be able to grab uh, Tiger Status' General with that. 
Are we going to get him? Are we going to get the general? Come on. Let's see it. Get it. Oh, he killed one of my guys. Killed two of them. Let's see if we let's see if we can drag the general down here. There we go. He was a fighter, but we we got him. And we got some uh, Jeanette's there probably throwing some crap into my guys. Uh, down to 28. Oh, and his forlorn hope are going to get my uh they're going to get my Aventurier. But I did get my Scots guard off of here. So that was a good play by Teutonic using those forlorn hope very well to clear that uh, that wall off. Yeah, so I'm able to get that unit of 35 Scots Guard out, and I got the 21 unit out too. Arquebus going to keep trying to route these guys on the wall, but man, they are holding very well. And they pushed us almost all the way back to the town center here. Uh, but finally some French infantry going to come in and hit them in the back. So that's why I said I was able to hold Turkey off in a decisive enough manner to where I could send infantry over to flip the tide of this battle. So now they're flanked on all the sides, and that's going to be the end of their push there, pretty much. You can see just the uh, the carnage on the walls from all those archers, and the carnage on the other side, too, from our archers. Yeah, look at that. Wow. <laughs> and this is on small scale. And Just look at all the carnage in there. Scots Guard, these ones out of ammo, are going to go into the fight. And they're not going to do horribly. I mean, obviously, they're they're not going to beat Gothic Knights. Uh, but they're not going to do horribly either. Turkey's got some town militia running through there. This tower is still activated. i got some Scots Guard up there. Lavernicus doing a great job just holding them off in layers so they can't, uh, they can't win decisive battles without using up a lot of stamina. And then, what do they got? Like five guys here, nine there, uh, eight there. So very depleted Pavis on the wall. But at the same time, they've kind of cleared us out down here too. Seven, oh, it's even closer. Oh my gosh. 77 to 78. This battle is just such a nail biter. England falling back here. Going to cede this gate to, uh, to the Reichstag. And I'm probably going to have to bring some more infantry over there to help deal with that. I've already got a good cluster of guys in here. So now Turkey's doing the right thing. He's getting uh, missile units up on the walls here. Yeoman archers uh, going on what appears to be a suicide mission. Quite suicidal, I must say. <laughs> and... Danish general down very low. We've got some cannons trying to fire through there. I uh, should probably probably move. <laughs> Another really good strategy. Once the walls are breached, leave some ammo left, and then you can use the cannons uh, to clear out stuff like that. And I will probably go to that siege here once this battle is done. Uh, let me respond to him. Okay. 15 minutes. We'll definitely be done for 10. So, yeah, so there you can see the cannons clearing out that square there. And Lavernicus going to do the right thing and move. Oh, did those yeomen... The suicide mission was unsuccessful. For some reason, they're still alive. I thought they were going to suicide themselves over here, but uh, would appear their will to live was quite strong. And now we've got some fighting, minor fighting going on over here with the mounted crossbowmen, and the Sherwood archers are going to uh, cut them down like the minions of Prince John that they are. And now we've got uh, Scots Guard going in there. Oh, here, let me get it back to one. And those crossbowmen are going to break, and I think... We're going to keep pushing here, and I think we're going to get that general's bodyguard down to two. There's the general. Can we get him? This would be the second bodyguard that my noble knights, or the second general that my noble knights would get rid of. Very risky to have your general in there fighting noble knights, because noble knights are so effective against armor and effective against cavalry. 
Let's see the fate of uh, of the Danish general here. Looks like he's going to try to go for the Arquebus. Oh, he's going to try to get out maybe. Maybe he's trying to maneuver. Going to hack and slash at some Arquebus. And he's going to wheel through here uh, in attempt to get a charge. He is going to get a charge on my Arquebus. But he goes into the stakes. Oh! Oh, oh! We gave him the stake, boys. We gave him the stake. Oh, the general... Looking at the Arquebus charges in, he gets the stake to the face. Ugh. The most a dishonorable way to die as a general. Going right into the stake. So the stake strategy worked out. The one horse it killed was the Danish general. <laughs> of course, that's the only horse that's dead. And then we got a bunch of this Turkish garbage here that's, uh, you know, the Ottoman infantry and town militia. Uh, that's not going to last very long. Uh, I've got some Aventuri over here. Are they going to get good angles here? I wonder if they can... Let's see. Oh, they are. They're going to get a... Yeah, there's just enough room for them to clear the... Oh! There's just enough room for them to clear the rooftops, and they're going to wreck those town militias. That's no bueno. And we do have a couple units of pike militia left here for the, the Holy Roman Empire. And here you're going to see some good use of Arquebus. I'm using them at this angle. And all of a sudden, these Ottoman infantry, they're wavering just from that uh, that gunfire there. So always make sure that when you have guns that you utilize them because they have such a powerful morale debuff. So there the Ottoman infantry, even with 12 men, going to run away. And I've got one unit of armored sergeants here holding back this, uh, basically the entire Turkish army. And I'm going to run some Scots Guard uh, over to here so we can start shooting him in the back. Because he's not he doesn't have any guys up on the wall here, so why not? They are continuing the push here with some Gothic Knights for the center, but there's enough guys back in here now where I don't think they're going to quite make it to the center. Now all the Ottoman infantry breaking there uh, due to the heroic gunfire of the Arquebus and uh, almost certainly the Aventurier as well. And my Noble Knights over here, looks like they're finishing off some crossbowmen. Oh, the cannon crew. Okay. So they're going to get rid of this cannon crew. And then basically they just have archers left. One unit of Gothic Knights. Oh, well, of course. Of course the host server keeps crashing. What you get for playing with noobs? <clears throat> going to bring some uh, armored sergeants back here. Hold off some Janissaries, got some more guys coming in here. But see, the problem is they haven't captured the walls. And so they're just going to get absolutely decimated uh, by these crossbowmen. And so even though the uh, the flank over here was more or less a win for the attackers, the Turkish side um, didn't kill enough of my ar I still have enough of my army to be able to um, turn the tide of the battle here at the end. And see the, those crossbows are just going to come in and they're just going to be destroying everything here. And all of a sudden the Turkish army is starting to break in perpetuity. And now I've got these uh, these these Aventurier over there and these Scotsguard over here uh, that have been shooting them in the back. So uh, that's you can see all these dead Ottomans from the missile fire. And we got some chivalric knights. And now the push is coming in from the Holy Roman Empire. But we got enough guys... Still here in the center, cannonball going off there. Oh, I've got some chivalric knights here holding everything off. And we're going to see if that's going to be enough for them to rush center. Although I have my archers in good enough spots where I think I'm going to be able to hold. There's the Turkish bodyguard right there. Already, oh, this Scots Guard's out of ammo. So it's just this Aventurier firing down here, but they're doing a lot of damage here. And my Chivalric Knights are holding against the Gothics. Now my General is coming in. This is, I believe this is my General. Yep, that's the French General right there. And these Armored Sergeants are going to fight these Gothic Knights. And actually we're able to route uh, one of them down to 7. We've got some Pike Militia back here. And that one's down to 38. Town militia, Turkish archers breaking, the cannon breaking there, and look at uh, look at the damage those archers did to those Turkish units there. That did not turn out super well. <laughs>
for the uh, for the attackers. But now we've got the bodyguard coming around here, trying to make a play. Are they going to get? They're not. Oh, they are going to get a charge, but oh, they're just going to stop short of the stakes. Dang it! So now my uh, my arquebus are going to turn around. I'm going to run the Scots guard through there. I'm trying to get him to chase my men. Is what I'm trying to do. Oh, there we got one. Is he going to? Oh, oh, get him, get him, get him, get him! Oh, is that? Uh, Oh, he's going to run. Is he going to run into the stakes? Yes. Right on top of the Danish general. Yes. That was super cringe. That, and super cool that uh, the Turkish general just dies right on top of the Danish general. <laughs> oh, the stakes. Oh, the stakes are high in this battle. <laughs> they made quite a mistake, I would say. Not a good bet to uh, stake one's fortune on. <laughs> I'm sure you all appreciate uh, my puns there. Anyway, we got the Pike Militia coming in here towards the center. Although I think their own cannonball. Oh, was that the mortar or was that their own cannonball? Uh, that mortar's not firing. So I'm going to go with that was their own cannonball uh, that I saw there. Turkish army, basically just the Janissary Musketeers. I'm going to have my Scots Guard go deal with them. Although Janissary Musketeers are probably almost as good in melee as Scotsguard are in the expansion. So it's going to be a pretty even sword fight there. But the French army uh, still quite a bit intact. Well, the battle's still very close. 86-92. And now we've got some Frenchmen behind uh, the, Roman the, uh, the Imperial lines here. The Holy Roman lines is what I was trying to say. And the pikemen are going to start breaking. This is where the balance of power properly begins to shift. But just take a moment to appreciate the carnage here in the streets, everyone. And the amount of effort and strategy that went into producing uh, the results here on both sides. And there goes the uh, the Holy Roman general there uh, to my Aventurier right here. So the... Uh, he did kill quite a lot of them, didn't he? But I think they were out of ammo anyway. So, so now all of the generals are dead for the attackers. Uh, two at the hands of the stakes... And two at the hands of my Frenchmen. Oh, and the Noble Knights are going to cut through all those guys running too. That's quite nice. So, Lavernicus and Rogue over here did just an incredible job of holding back uh, the tripartite over here of Portugal, HRE, and Denmark. Uh, three very good players and... They did an excellent job. They held them off. They kept them from going to the center. They skirmished really effectively on the wall. And they made it so my army just kind of had to come in and clean things up. You know, we got rid of the Turks. And then just kind of did cleanup duty uh, over there on the side. And so, there we have the end of the battle. And I wanted to share this with you guys because I hope you, you saw the amount of strategy that went into this battle. The plays and counterplays. The amount of... Uh, philosophy and strategy that went into how each side utilized their units. So this was a very close battle. Both sides playing very well. Uh, let's see. Uh, Lavernicus, 900 kills, 900 and almost 1,000 there. Um, man, almost 800 kills to the Teutonic Order. That's pretty incredible for an attacker. That's really good. And then uh, fairly similar, almost 700 from... Uh, from Russian King there is Denmark. So, very good game on all sides. I hope you guys got a lot from this battle about um, the geometry with archers and different strategies and multiplayer. And that's what I wanted to bring to you guys. So, hope you guys enjoyed this battle. And uh, let me know below what you, what you think. Uh, any questions about the battle, about strategy. But I hope this was a really good uh, learning opportunity for a lot of people. It certainly was for me playing high-level games like this. Everyone in this game has thousands of hours of experience. So I really appreciate bringing you guys high-level competitive content like this. That's where I, I think my niche is, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will see you guys next time, uh, the next time that I happen to have time to record a battle. So appreciate you guys watching, and we'll see you next time.